Hello, my name is Del Stevens. Some of you know me as the Tuna Dog. We're talking tuna today, and this seminar is all about new technology and more advanced ways of finding albacore. And some of the stuff I'm going to cover today will actually also help you to find other things out there. A couple years ago, Sirius XM came out with a new product called Fish Mapping. They've had weather service and music for a long time, which I've had the weather service for a long time as well, and I use it quite a bit. And I'll talk about that as well. But fish mapping is new. It was developed by Sirius XM in conjunction with using Garmin equipment. And as of today, there's only, I believe, one other manufacturer. SAMRAT, I believe, uh, should be operational with their fish mapping program. Most other manufacturers have Sirius XM weather but uh, more and more of them are adding the, so the updated software that can handle the fish mapping. So right now it's Garmin predominantly, and I don't know if SimRad, but they're they were supposed to come on this last fall. Sirius XM had their, their weather program, and they've since added eight features to it. These are the eight features, fishing recommendations, weed lines, sea surface height anomalies, sea surface temperature contours, sea surface temperature front strength, 30 meter subsurface sea temperatures, plankton concentration contours, and plankton front strength. The fishing recommendations are based on locations that they've gotten information from oceanographers as well as uh, other fishermen, and it's based on game fish, it's data-driven analysis, they're overlaid on your chart and they can be viewed in combination with other features that you choose to enable on the program. The weed lines use the concentrations of floating algae and plants that provide nutrients and cover for, for bait fish and which attract larger predator fish. Weed lines drift and shift over time. This is updated every 24 hours. The sea surface height anomalies is updated every 24 hours as well. But this views the locations where the sea, sea height is noticeably different than other surrounding areas. This identifies real-time radar data and models of the sea surface. This is something I use quite a bit and have used for a number of years. And um, I'll get into that here pretty soon. Sea surface temperature contours. They view the contour lines where the sea surface temperatures are clearly illustrated. And they're, the, the contour lines show the water temperature variances. Sea surface front strength. This is where you're viewing the estimated strength of the ocean fronts, which are significant when we're looking for temperature breaks when we're running offshore for albacore. And it'll show the distinct differences between different bodies of water and in different locations. It's updated every 24 hours. 30 meter subsurface sea temperatures. It views the water temperature 30 meters below the surface and then that's used because different species prefer specific ranges of temperatures and it'll give you an idea of, of what it is down there. It allows you to uh, have a range in, when you're targeting your fish. And when we're talking about thermoclines that are down below and you're having to go down for fish, these can actually play a role in helping you locate those fish. Plankton contour, concentration contours, it views the areas of plank, plankton concentrations. Plankton is also commonly referred to as chlorophyll. Plankton front strength, it views the areas where, this, where the plankton concentrations are stronger and where strong bordering areas and when we're looking for water temperature breaks and we're also looking for that transition between green water and blue water, this will help you to find those as well. This is also updated every 24 hours. Currently, you need a Garmin GXM 54 antenna to be able to pull it in. The GXM53 will get you Sirius XM weather, but will not get you fish mapping. You have to have a GXM54. Uh, it's compatible with the, most of the newer units. We talked about the eight features. Sea surface temperature options gives you the sea surface temperature contours, temperature front strength, or the 30 meter subsurface temperatures. And over on the display, you can pick what you want in this particular case. They're picking 30 meter contours. The plankton concentration options, there's two of them. And over here, they're picking that they want front strength. 
This is what I would use. Service hive anomaly has already been picked. The weed lines have been selected and the fish recommendations have been selected. Fishing recommendations can be turned off or on and you would turn those off or on. This has bluefin, mahi, marlin, swordfish, wahoo, and yellowfin. And they were going to combine the tuna, the bluefin and yellowfin into just a tuna recommendation. And this is on the, this picture is actually on the east coast and it's actually uh, in the Outer Banks. There's Hatteras Island right there and the Outer Banks right there. An area where I actually fish for giant bluefin tuna. And they've got the bluefin tuna on. They get their data and information from commercial fishermen and uh, oceanographers as to likely spots based on data of where you would find in the particular light blue here, that's bluefin. But di they'll pick different colors for different species. And they're applying that to the west coast. Uh, once that's available, they'll also upload it into the system and you'll probably have to do a Garmin update or a software update to whichever system you have at that time. Weed lines. They've got it selected and it, you can see it on the side of your screen that it's been selected and they've got the loop turned off. So that way you can see the weed lines out here in pink. And again, the weed lines are important because predator bait fish will hide underneath weed lines. The bigger predators will feed on those bait fish. This is actually off of uh, Florida and out of the, the Florida Keys. We get weed lines out here, not as prevalent. Southern California gets more weed lines than we do. This is probably not one I would have turned on for up here in the Northwest. This is sea surface temperature front strength. This is one I do use and I have some slides on how I use it. But uh, you can see by the longitude and latitude, this is on the East Coast, Nantucket Island. They've got their fish recommendations turned on and their temperature front strength, you can see, shows up right underneath it. So in temperature front strength, you can see temperature is in red and it's on a numerical value of one to four, four being the strongest. And if you take a touch, a Garmin touch screen and you touch somewhere right on that temperature line, it'll tell you that that's a very strong temperature break or front strength. So these being weaker, one, two being weaker, three being, and they'll contour right up to a four. These are your sea surface temperature contours. I probably wouldn't use these as much. Um, some people might. It'll show variances and uh, could give you an idea of, of where there's temperature breaks and different, that kind of thing. But I'd rather use the front strength for that. Again, they have their fishing recommendations on and sea, ter sea temperature contours. 30 meter subsurface sea temperatures. So now they're measuring down under the water 30 meters. And uh, it's interesting how the contours in these numbers follows a lot of the canyons and seamounts. Here is the plank plankton concentration contours. And again, up in the side of your screen, it'll tell you that it's on and it's measured in green. Temperatures measured in red, plankton's measured in green, and it's got a value that it's measured in M. And the higher the value, the higher the concentration. Here's plankton front strength. Again, this is in a value as well, one to four. And you can see there we're, um, we're on the East Coast again, and there's Martha's Vineyard, and you've got two, three, and a four, and somebody touched the screen right there, which shows that it's very strong right there. Now, again, anytime you touch the screen or move a cursor to a spot and touch it, it's going to tell you how many miles that is from where you're at. In this particular case, the guys at Sirius XM in their office in Washington, D.C., and it's 354 miles to that location from their office. And there's the longitude and latitude of that. So I've sat at the dock before in El Waco and used this and just panned offshore and, um, or anywhere I want to look. I've been in Southern California and panned up here and looked 
to see what was going on. So, so it'll, you can look at it from anywhere. You can pan across the ocean, pan acro across the United States. So the layer's turned on up here. Sea temperature is off. Plankton concentration front strength is on. Surface height anomaly is off. Weed lines are off. And fish recommendations are turned on. So, and you can see the fish recommendations. And the plankton front shows up over here. Sea surface height anomalies. This is important because it shows you where there's upwellings and where the currents are. And anywhere there's a strong upwelling, a lot of times there's bait fish that are trapped that can't swim out of that area and your predators will feed on those areas. And uh, it's, it's interesting because now we have the sea, we have fish recommendations still turned on, but we have sea height anomalies turned on over here. Again, we're still on the east coast, Nantucket Sound. This is 19.6, and right beside it is 1.96. Huge difference right there in the height anomalies. And you can see all the contours in here are real close. So you've got a pretty good sea mound. It looks like probably right about here. Anywhere you've got a negative number like that, you've got a downwelling. That's the last place you want to fish in a downwelling because it's driving everything down. There's not going to be anything on the surface. So you're fishing in a spot that has nothing. So you want to look for those upwellings. So here's a combination of plankton front strength fishing recommendations, sea surface temperature, front strength. And you can see they're highlighted over here, temperature front in red, plankton front strength in green, okay? So you've got temperature in red, and you've got temperature up here, there's temperature in red right there, and you've got plankton front strength, there's a three, there's a four, there's probably a four right in there. And so they touch that spot, and sure enough, it shows that it's a very strong temperature front strength and plankton front strength. Great place to maybe start fishing. And lo and behold, there's also fish recommendation right there. So they obviously caught fish there in the past. Uh, it's a good spot to, to fish. Apply that to the west coast. So now I have the temperature front strength on, and this actually was a shot I took in the wintertime last year and um, only doing temperature, which shows you temperature breaks offshore. But um, these are fours, there's a four. So the sea surface temperature front strength. There's the Columbia River, okay. Here's your sea temperature contours. Again, this is in the winter time, so these are cold. 46, 46, 50, 52, 54. This is up Columbia River right here, a little bit bigger picture because it goes up into British Columbia as well. And this was in January of last year these were shot. Sea temperature front and plankton front. And it will measure it even in the wintertime. So there's your plankton front, there's your temperature front. Temperature's in red, plankton in green. That's a three. There's a four coming around right through there and right through that three. Where those two connect, yeah. Be a good spot to maybe try. This is off my chart, and you can see that I've touched the screen. It's showing strong. Right now, I have the sea temperature front strength turned on. I've got the plankton front strength turned on, and I've got the sea height anomalies turned on. Three things I use when I'm looking out there. You can see I've been where my crumb trails are and where I've been fishing. A lot of trails there. This is 44.6 miles from me sitting at the dock to out to here. So it's still not very far. I was fishing in pretty close earlier. But this is uh, 40, 44 miles, 46.03 by 124.53. Very common area where we fish, close to the south corners, coming out of the Columbia River. So this is red's your temperature. Yep, there it is. The beige or orange is your sea height anomalies. And we've got smaller numbers out here, smaller numbers in here. Our greatest number comes right through there. 
And the plankton front strength, I believe that's a two and this is a three. And they all cross right about right in here. And great place to catch fish, caught fish there the following day and um, drove right to it and started fishing. Drove right to it, didn't troll, just started fishing vertically with iron and caught fish there. So worked fairly well. Now I've got the, the um, fish recommendations on, but because we don't have any data for the West Coast quite yet, you see there's nothing showing up in this screen for any of these species of, of bluefin or swordfish or wahoo, yellowfin, any of that stuff. So, so for now I would keep that turned off. Here's sea surface temperatures using Sirius XM weather, which has been around for a long time and most companies, units, Raymarine, Semrad, Furuno, um, all have it available. And I have used it for a long time. This picture will update throughout the day if you leave it on. As the temperatures change and they do the updates every three hours on temperature, it will also update. And you'll see it change and move around. As the tides move in and out, you'll see it change. You can see my crumb trails again. And the only thing I have turned on is sea temperature. And I've touched that spot. It's told me how far that spot is from where I'm setting. I'm, and when I took this picture, I was currently setting at the dock here in El Waco. Little more information layered over the top. I've added the swell period and I've added the wind to it. And it's a little bit hard to see it on this screen, but you've got the wind directions and arrows down here, all coming, looks like they're coming from up here pointed this way. These are all swells and there's a number on each one of these and that's how long it is between the swells, the duration. So you can also set at the dock and pan offshore with Sirius XM weather and see how big the ocean is out there. The farther apart these are, the longer the duration. You see they're in pretty close in here and you see they're farther apart out here. And the farther you got offshore, and you can still see them a little bit in this other temperature, see them up in here. They're a long ways apart here. It was a pretty flat ocean. Another one showing a different, different scale. I have adjusted the scale differently on my settings of the window I want to see. Normally I'm sitting here with about 58 to 64 degrees is the window I want to see. But in this particular case, I took it back down to, I believe about 54 to 64. And uh, so I could see cooler water in closer. I was offshore fishing for tuna. The guys on board wanted to fish for salmon once we were done tuna fishing. And I took and I panned in, inshore. And year before last, we had a lot of warm water coming out of the Columbia River. And in certain instances, it was hard to find salmon because those salmon were looking for cooler water, especially on an outgoing tide. They were, that warm water comes out of the Columbia River and disperses out there. And a lot of times those salmon will move north or south to get away from it to, to find cooler water. So we're way out here and I touched inshore here and sure enough, I found some 58 degree water. I was trying to get water below 60 degrees. So I found a spot in here it told me it was 10 miles from where we were at when I did this and uh, so we ran back inside and went straight to that spot, started fishing, told me what the longitude and latitude was. We started fishing and started catching salmon. Worked really well. Otherwise we were going to have to hunt for them and um, hopefully run into them by accident or find other boats that were fishing them. Here's that picture with the parameters adjusted to show the temperature and also we're showing period and the wind and you can see the duration between the swells is longer out here and shorter in here. The fronts and the fish species and this is coming off the Columbia River and it's got the sea temperature, fronts, the plankton front and the sea height anomalies and we're up here off the Columbia River you can see all the contours and it's kind of you got to sit here and kind of study this a little bit find your largest numbers of one 
Maybe find the largest number of the sea height anomalies. Now find the largest number in that same area that you're wanting to look at for plankton and then find the largest number on a scale, scale of one to four for the temperature front strength and plankton front strength one to four and um, in the sea height anomalies. It's got the, all the fish recommendations turned on. You can see there's none of them, so I'd turn them back off. This is a wintertime shot of sea surface temperatures in the northwest. And uh, you can see it's 42 up to about 54. The only place it's about 54 degrees would be, there's your Columbia River, um, Willapa Bay, Astoria Canyon. So you can see this is a long ways offshore in the wintertime. So now we're back around to summertime type temperatures. And uh, these are ones I've shown you in previous seminars. This is the Columbia River, August 24, 2009. This is a sea surface temperature chart, but this is off of a web-based service that everyone should also belong to. And this is off of Terrafin. There's also another one out there called Rip Charts. There's uh, free services as well, but they're typically not as up to date. Uh, some guys like to use Nanus, but uh, you should use some service of some kind. This Terrafin, you know, for $100 a year, it's pretty inexpensive. I could burn $100 worth of fuel in an hour running around offshore looking for, for fish. And if you had a spot that you could go to, pick, and said, hey, I think I'm going to start here. It could save you a lot of money on the ocean, especially if you burn a lot of fuel. So here's a summertime shot of the waters off the Columbia River and off of Oregon and Washington. There's the Columbia River, you know, Willapa Bay up here, Tillamook down here, and you've got a temperature bar on the side showing you what the, the temperatures are. Remember with Albacore tuna, we're looking for 58 to 62 degrees. We're also looking for a significant jump in temperature, which is where the front strength, the temperature front strength, and the chlorophyll front, front strength, if you were to take them and look at them on your chart, on your boat, and then also have this available to look at, it'd give you a pretty good idea of where you want to go. This is reading pretty significant temperature jumps. But in August and in September, we get some pretty warm water offshore. This is on the 125 line and, um, you know, 50 miles offshore. And 50 miles offshore, we've got 64, 65, 66 degree water. Waters like this, you'll start seeing Dorado, Yellowtail. You'll see Marlin come up into those waters. We do get them periodically. Last year, someone caught, a, there was a couple of people caught Marlin last year. And then you've got the chlorophyll and compare that with the chlorophyll. Terrafin also has sea height anomalies. They've had it for a long time that you can also look at to see. And then here's another picture off my chart showing I'm sitting at the dock in here in El and uh, I've got my temperatures adjusted 54 to 64 and I'm panning offshore and I've touched that spot it already told me what the temperature was, and it tells me it's 42 miles offshore to get to that. Thanks, everyone, for watching the seminar. If you missed one of the others, I'm sure they're online. You can go back and pick them up. Uh, if you have any questions, send, go to my website, tunadogoffshore.com. My contact information is there. Send me an email, and I'll respond to it. Appreciate you tuning in and watching the seminar. Thank you.